Hey everyone, I'm Josh Olson, and this is my YouTube channel. If you haven't already done so, click the subscribe button below to be notified of all my conversations. Today's guest has many titles. He was the first ever graduating class of the Dan Patrick School of Sportscasting at Full Sail University. He is a YouTube reporter, and he is a content producer at NESN. Today, I have a conversation with Tyler Baronski. I hope you all enjoy. So I appreciate it. You got it, man. No problem at all. So you're in Orlando right now? Yeah, I'm in Orlando right now. Yep. I graduate in May. So first week of May. Awesome, bro. How do you like it so far there? Um, it's a good experience. I've had fun. It's there's a lot of stuff to do. They keep you busy and Yeah, right. And a lot of good networking opportunities. Talk to a lot of people and stuff. So it's really cool. Cool. And what exactly do you want to do in because you're in entertainment business, right? That's your degree? Yeah, entertainment business. So mm -hmm. I want to work in theater, but obviously right now, that's that's a tough call because everything's yeah. shut down. So, and you never know though. Like you never know with that degree. Like it's pretty open ended in a way. So that's that's good. Like yeah, I had a couple true. friends that graduated from that program, and they're different spaces. One went into actually like video game, which I'm, not, I'm like maybe you should have went to game design if you just didn't <laughs> go into video games. But yeah, um, and I've seen like people go to music afterwards too, and more event stuff. So I mean, yeah. It's kind of well, open-ended, which is nice. How was your experience at Full Sail? You graduated in 2019, I, right? Yeah, October 2019. I mean, I loved it because the sports casting program was brand new at the time. It was the first ever class for it. So, I mean, they were trying to figure it out as well, but it was pretty exciting to be part of something like brand new. And, it, you know, they focused a lot of attention on it and they were bringing a lot of different guests all the time. So... I really love the experience there. I mean, it definitely helped a lot. And I know the sports casting program, they kind of do like their own thing. Like, I don't know, separate from Full Sail, like they kind of get their own group. But I mean, like the teachers, they were all great. And like, they're honestly like Gus Ramsey, who is the program director for that, for, for sports yeah. casting. He's pretty much the reason why I'm at this company now at Nesson in Boston. Like connection he had, well, my boss um, worked with him at ESPN. Oh, so wow. that's how I initially at least um, they sent my Gus sent my resume to them. That's how I got the initial interview and kind of went from there. But was Dan Patrick, was he a big part of it? Was he there? Like, yeah, yeah, he was there. He so he was always there four times a year on campus. But then he also like Skyped a few times as well. Um, yeah, I mean, he was he was pretty involved. He would like review our work sometimes, too, uh, which yeah, is awesome. really cool because it's Dan Patrick. So it was, uh, it was really special. So he, he was involved. Um, I mean, it's, I don't know how it is now for them because when I first started, it was so small, the amount of students in there, they have a ton of students now. They, I think they have like 400 students in the program now, which was, yeah, there's a lot the of, case, not the case when I was there. So I don't know how it is for them. How's it been at, um, NESN? It's great. Yeah, it's great. It's, it's kind of, like they keep me busy as well. So I was just doing some stuff right before this, doing some like media Zoom stuff with some of the Red Sox uh, guys and then doing this. And then I'll head to the office at like three o'clock today and I'll do, I'll work like more behind the scenes tonight on the Bruins uh, live game broadcast. So for them, I do a little bit of both. I do some on camera interviewing stuff and then I do some behind the scenes stuff. So it's, it keeps me busy, but I really love it there a lot. So it's been great. So what would be uh what would be like your day to day duties like you're going in tonight what would you what would you do tonight like what was your uh well <laughs> that changes every single every day. day for me uh tonight I'll just be operating more technical like the score bug that people see in the top left hand corner last night I was creating graphics for all the news shows uh my I'm just a I'm a content producer which for them is a very loose term which means they kind of give me something new every single day. So literally, yeah, uh, I, like I said, I was just doing interviews right before this. So I'm, you know, is something your, new each day. So is your, eventual, tomorrow, is yeah, your go eventual goal to be like on camera behind the desk? Yeah, more like a reporter uh, would be um, the route that I think I would go for sure. More the interviewing aspect. Okay, um, going to the so game. That, I mean, they've given me that opportunity so far in a way. and. Um, you know, I'm grateful. And then hopefully, yeah, it can make that more of a, my full-time responsibilities. But, but the fact is part of my responsibilities 
already is uh it's great it's really appreciated so and uh, are you from the northeast i'm from connecticut originally yeah originally yeah so it's is it good to be close to home or yeah it's different because like i can i mean i can't go home as often as i thought i would because the schedule wise but it is only like a three-hour drive which is so much easier than having to fly from when i lived in orlando true yeah Um, that's true that's so i mean there's a big difference in that way what uh what cool experiences have you had at nesn that you could talk about man it's i mean it starts with doing a lot of the zoom press conferences just because i'm a i'm a red sox fan growing up so this is like my number one team so the fact that i'm with this network that they are owned by the red sox and we have you know, all the access to the Sox players. And then the fact that my company's giving me this chance, it's, I mean, it's really cool to, you know, each day talk to players that I was watching on TV, you know, rooting hard for the last, you know, so many years. And uh, now, now they're kind of getting to know me a little bit. They're seeing me more frequent. And now I'm, you know, building a relationship with them um, as part of the media. So that's definitely one of my highlights for sure. Um, and then, you know, just, just seeing how TV works in general, it's, mm-hmm. I, I got a taste of it at full sale a bit. Um, but I mean, once you're in it, it's, it's, you learn how much you have to work as a team with your group because you have to get the product out, especially in live TV. It, it can get stressful sometimes because yeah. you're on a deadline. Um, and it's kind of like that every single day. So, uh, it was definitely an adjustment when I first got there, like, okay, working at a more efficient pace, working at a quicker pace and just understanding like, how can I make other people's jobs better? Because it helps when you know other people's departments and roles, even if that's not necessarily your specific duty. So um, that's just kind of been a learning process, Um, but it's been cool to see. It's like live TV is neat because you do get that adrenaline rush. Um, So I guess it's fun in that aspect. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and then like, I don't know, everyone there has been really great so far in Nassim, like just the people so far. I mean, it was a little weird to start because of the COVID protocols and, you know, everyone wearing masks and stuff and supposed to, you know, use, be six feet apart. So it was a little tough at first to connect with other people, but um, I'm in my sixth month there and been able to connect a bit more, especially now that I'm more involved with the creative process sometimes doing the media stuff and doing like graphics and video editing sometimes for their shows. You know, I'm involved with talking to the producers more and the on-air talent. So um, yeah, just building that kind of work relationship and it's, it's been great. Coming right out of school, being kind of young, did you have that intimidation factor, like trying to interview some of these superstars you could say? Um, not some not so much about like interviewing them because I've, I've been doing this stuff for a while just on my own through like YouTube and stuff literally since like ninth grade. So it's a weird thing. I did like another podcast recently and they they kind of asked a similar thing. And I was like, you know, it's a weird thing because this is technically that first big full-time job since, you know, since, uh, you know, after graduating college and stuff, but I feel like I've been working since like ninth grade in this field of work in some capacity. So uh, in a way, it's not that new, like doing the role and stuff. It's just, it's more for their end, like getting used to me um, because I'm just a new face, like True. to the media. You know, there's a lot of those media members that have been covering the Red Sox for so long. And it's like, who's this random 22 year old kid I've never seen before in my life. So it's them getting used to me. It's Red Sox PR getting used to me, the Sox players, and then just my network and company as well, like them um you know uh, I guess trusting me and building that reputation and then uh keep trying to provide them like valuable content so they continue to give me more opportunities and and responsibilities so it's like still trying to prove yourself that's the biggest thing um but as far as the role itself uh I, I feel good about it so far I feel comfortable and do you do you interact with the other like the media guys that are there the other sportscasters like and get advice um, from them maybe or they give you advice yeah yeah definitely um especially like some of the on-air town we have in nesson like one guy uh jamai webster I actually had a chance to shadow him last week which was really neat i asked my boss i'm like can i shadow jamai and jamai is the new red sox sideline reporter for the tv for the games you know that people will see on tv all 162 games so he'll be the the guy people see 
And um, we just, I was with him the entire day. Like it was really neat. And I just like picked his brain and he gave me a ton of advice about uh, keeping that, you know, the boundaries between keeping a relationship with the players, like what's professional, what's not. And just advice for him when he has to interview a player, like right after a game on TV, because it's for him, you know, right after the game's over that he has to, you know, like a packed Fenway park with 30,000 people, he has to get the player real quick and ask his three questions on the spot. And he gave me some advice relating to that, just how to form your questions quickly as well. Just a ton of stuff. And that's, that was really neat. You know, I don't think you would get that type of experience at a lot of places where you could just literally shadow someone of that caliber. Um, and yeah, it, I've definitely got a lot of advice in that sense. Cause it is still, I am definitely young compared to a lot of the people there. So it is still new to me and I am adjusting as quickly as I can, but yeah, I have been able to get like a lot of advice in that sense. And it's been cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, so you did, uh, you've been doing YouTube interviews since you were in ninth grade, you said? Yeah. Yeah. Do you remember what your first interview was? Yeah. Um, it was with a minor league player. I actually did play in the big leagues, but he was in the minor leagues at the time with a guy named Luis Lopez. He's actually a guy I've, I've kept a really good relationship with over the years. Um, and yeah, I just, I remember thinking one day, I was like watching ESPN and MLB network. And I'm like, man, all these like reporters, they get to like talk to players. Like I lived near a minor league ballpark uh, in Connecticut. So I was like, why can't I just talk to players like the ESPN reporters do? So I had known Luis for a while. And then I asked him if I could interview him, got my credential or whatever. And then once I interviewed him, I was like, man, this is so cool. Like you get this one-on-one -on -one time with a player to ask any questions you want. Like I would, I just love doing it. And then later on, you know, I was doing it for fun at first, but then I realized like probably like 11th grade, I was like, Oh, you can do this for a career. And that's when I kind of started looking at colleges for like who has the best sports media program. Mm -hmm. um, I had known about full sale, but they didn't have the sports casting program yet. But then I, when I visited full sale, like the behind the scenes tour, I met ran into Gary Jones um, ironically. And he told me, we're going to start this sports casting program um, probably during the time, you know, once you enroll in full sale. And that's how I was kind of hooked after that. I was like, let me go to full sale for it. But yeah, definitely started with Luis Lopez, uh, played with the Toronto Blue Jays. And yeah, it was, it was cool. How, how was the experience of trying to get your media credentials in? I guess it would have been, might have been yeah. a little bit easier in a minor league affiliate team. It is easier in minor league, um, not as much competition, but that's a great question because it was kind of difficult sometimes because I wasn't with like an outlet. I think that was the biggest thing. It wasn't a little bit my age, but excuse me, it was um, not being with like an outlet. So it was just for my YouTube channel. So it's really convincing them, yeah, to give me those credentials. And then I think just showing them like, you know, I was working hard and like kind of hustling for it and at least like asking, you know, good or decent questions questions um just kind of producing good content that would reflected well for the minor league team's brand if, if people looked up you know google players on their team or stuff on youtube like interviews with them so i think once they started seeing that they're like okay we can have tyler come more and then i started traveling to like other teams in that minor league league so i would go to like new york new jersey pennsylvania go to the different teams there oh. and it was kind of like that it was like pitching yourself to get the credentials but like the snowball effect kind of you know grows after you start doing it for a little while and honestly it's the same way now it's the same way once I got to Orlando I started doing more like higher and stuff like NBA and I was doing NBA stuff just through my YouTube channel that wasn't through an outlet either but it's because I had all a ton of sports interviews like over the years built up it's like okay he's kind of done this for a while and then YouTube helped me get my job here in Nesson and now Ness and I'm doing like more baseball interviews again, but I'm representing the network now. So like, it's just a snowball effect, man, over the years, but it was kind of tough at first to like pitch people to get credentials for sure. You have, a, you have a particular sport you like to do better than the other. I know you like baseball, but. Yeah, I would say baseball and basketball are my two favorites by, by a lot. Um, but probably baseball is my number one. That's the one I feel most comfortable. And that's 
the one uh, like I kind of just like grew up loving the most even though I didn't play baseball I didn't play baseball in like high school or nothing so it's kind of weird um, but my dad was a big baseball guy and I think that kind of influenced my love for the game so but baseball and basketball are my two favorites for sure are your parents involved in television or sports? No, um, yeah, yeah, not at all. I have no one in my family that is even remotely close to my field of work. So, but they're the great thing is they have been really supportive, and oh, I great. think they just saw like in high school me. This is this is what I did in my free time. Like literally after school, um, I would head to a ballpark somewhere and start doing these interviews. And I think they saw right away like I really enjoyed doing this. Um, so they're very supportive, but yeah, definitely no knowledge about sports media whatsoever. Honestly, besides my dad, like no one else in my family even likes sports. Like I have a brother and sister. They're not like sports fans or anything like that. Um, so yeah, um, it's kind of funny in that sense, but no. That's awesome. That's awesome. So going like completely out of sports, um, I know you've done a film extra or TV extra. Yeah. For Stranger Things, how was your experience with that? And how did, how did, what led you to that? Was it Full Sail? Um, no, it was, so um, when I got to Full Sail, like I had done all the sport interviews for a while and obviously I was going for a sports casting degree. Um, but then like live in Orlando, there's so many of those like Comic Con events and there's these like social media conventions and, as you know, living in the area and yeah. And I've always loved entertainment as well growing up. Like, I've, you know, I love sports. I love entertainment. Um, so once I, like, these events were, like, so close to where I was living in Orlando, I was like, oh, let me try it out. Like, you know, I've never interviewed actors before and kind of just had fun doing that. I was like, oh, that would be – I really enjoy this too. It's just, like, a totally different world. It, there's – people ask me, like, do you like sports? Do you like entertainment better? I'm like, there's just pros and cons to both. They're just so different, um, yeah. the experiences. Um so that's when I kind of started shifting my YouTube channel, more focus on entertainment. And if you look at my channel now, it's really been more entertainment focus. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like I saw 2017. you Reed Miller the other day. Oh yeah. Yeah. Reed Miller. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. So like, that's when I started doing the entertainment stuff and I was interviewing like some recurring characters on Stranger Things. And I was trying to grow my name, like my brand and my name in the entertainment world. So I was like, uh, what's the way to do that? If I'm interviewing these members from Stranger Things, being on the show would, uh, I don't know, make me different in the entertainment yeah. scene. Because as you know, like in entertainment, I kind of group entertainment and sports together in a way, like entertainment is the big umbrella. Like you just got to do anything to make yourself stand out different or just exactly. something different yeah. about you. I don't know. So I uh, figured out the way to get casted for Stranger Things as a background actor. I did a a show previously Atlanta on FX and then I had a friend that did Stranger Things season two and they kind of helped me with getting me in touch or, or telling me like how to what the process is to get cast of Stranger Things like who's in charge of it and stuff so submitted my information and stuff for Stranger Things season three to the casting person for that and surprisingly for Stranger Things it was it took a while to cast it, even just as a background actor. It took like four rounds, I remember, which was like three or four months it ended up being. Oh, wow. Okay. And you had to like submit like a lot of different info and like some sort of headshots. It didn't have to be like professional, but like headshots. And they, you needed to keep your hair super long. Like you couldn't cut your hair at all. Uh, if you like cut your hair, they were like going to like, <laughs> I don't know, disqualify you because I guess they want the 80s look or whatever. So it was actually kind of a process for Stranger Things, but then I got cast for it. Luckily, like I got selected. Um, that's awesome. And yeah, that's I went great. to Atlanta for it for a week because uh, that's all I could do. I, I had to miss a couple of days of, at full sale. And as you know, being there, you can't miss too many days at full sale or you'll fail the class. So I definitely reached my limit there. I missed two days, I believe. Um, and I was in Atlanta for the week. And it was it's still one of my favorite experiences I've had because <laughs> – yeah, I'm just a background actor. Like, obviously, I, I'm, in, I'm in it for like three seconds, the show, but just the experience of being on the set. And I try to make the most of it, like interacting with the other background actors. And the funny thing about Stranger Things is like, I don't know if there's a thing called professional background actors, but like all those people that were casted on Stranger Things yeah. were like people that had been background actors on like a bunch of other projects before, like Marvel stuff and 
uh, whatever, I don't know, oh, wow. Hunger Games. So like, it was kind of cool hearing like their like stories about like set and stuff at other places. So, and you know, I met all the kids and stuff that the main actors and Joe Keery actually was able to talk to a lot and Maya Hawk. Um, so you were actually able to interact with the main actors as long as like, you know, like fanboying or nothing like that. So it was kind of, it was just really neat. It's like, I felt like I was like contributing. I, I mean, in a way I was like, I was there 14 hours a day for a week. And like, you feel like you're part of the team uh, for that week. So the Duffer brothers are very involved. Like you see them all the time. You can, you interact with them. So it's one of my favorite experiences I've had for sure. And it's definitely like the thing that gets brought up. I mean, all the time, every single podcast, every interview, and even at my work, people <laughs> found out at my work that I was on Stranger Things. So like, dude, you're on Stranger Things? And they asked about it too. So I kind of figured that would happen once I did the show. And going back to my earlier point, I was like, you got to find stuff that makes it a little different. Like I literally had it come up in like job interviews, like people find out, like it happens all the time. So <laughs> it worked out in that way. Yeah, yeah that's great. Thank you for watching my conversation today. Did you enjoy this conversation? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button to be notified of all my future conversations. And I'll see you again soon. Thank you so much.